Fades green. We are streaming, apparently. Okay, but not on... It shouldn't, like, go up. I think we're streaming. This might be on Periscope. So let's see. Um, yeah, do I have a... Yeah, we still have account on Facebook. Okay. But I don't know if Periscope is actually... Well, if you're watching on Periscope, hello. Yeah, we're not sure. Hi. <laughs> we're trying. Beta. Beta. We have beta. 15 seconds to... <clears throat> 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, seconds. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. How do you want me to do Port Augustine for the articles? There's not much to write. Let's not talk about that right now. <laughs> Hello, I think we're live. I'm not sure, so I'm just going to start this intro. Um, welcome to the USCFootball.com live show. It is now called Tunnel Vision, a new name that was thought of this morning, so instant creativity from us. Uh, Tunnel Vision is the live show. If you can see, we have a whole new setup. It is Ryan Abraham's brainchild. But before we get into that, I'm Keely Orr. I'm the semi-host annoying person in this. Uh, supposed to annoy these two. And I'm joined by Inside Troy, Ryan Abraham, publisher of uscfootball.com and shotgun spratling how you doing guys what's shotgun. up yeah so this is so this is our we're in our new studio so I'll give you a little background this is a beta test show so we're trying this out let us know if there's any problems or anything um we're just trying this out we said we were going to do a test show like now nah, let's just go live and see what happens yeah but, we were supposed to do a test show make sure there's no bumps and then ryan's Pedal to the metal. So beta show with a disclaimer that we might have a couple issues, maybe because we're a new studio, new equipment, but yeah. hopefully not. I'm I'm looking at this. So Keely, um, <laughs> Keely wanted to do a little more cautionary <laughs> approach, and I said, no, let's just jump right in. I yeah, think Shotgun was on my side, right? Yeah, we don't really do that cautionary oh, stuff. Just goodness. go for it. Yeah. So quality. what we're trying to do is so it's a different studio. Um, so it's different than where we were before. We're going to, uh, we're using a new program, Wirecast. We've done it a few times before and, you know, trying this out. How does it look good? Does it look okay to you or? Okay. For whatever reason on this computer, it's like kind of going slow. So, um, and we're trying to do this broadcast three different ways all at once. So uh, Facebook Live is where we typically have done uh, the show. We're going to do, it's hopefully going up on YouTube Live right now. And then also Periscope slash Twitter. Um, so let us know if you're going to try any of those and, you know, send us any kind of feedback. Hopefully, are we seeing any comments? Uh, so far, so good. Uh, okay. Let us know if there's any issues. Also, leave your questions, comments. We will get to them. As you can see in the left corner, we have today's topics. Um, obviously, we were talking about the new show format, but we're going to discuss Pac-12 Media Day, the quarterback race, and fall camp. Fall camp is just around the corner. I feel like Pac-12 Media Day, the fact that we have a live show, must mean that football is coming soon, correct? Football's back? Football? Yes. Almost. Almost, guys. Um, and still, then, just a little bit over a week now. Yeah. That's Eight great. days. That's great. So let us know all this stuff. Give us any feedback. We will be able to show your Facebook comments uh, during the show live and answer any questions that you have. We have some topics, as you can see on there. We're going to talk a little bit about the new show format. The name of the show, do you like it or not? Uh, we were trying to come up with stuff. Thanks, shout out to Gate Call on the Peristyle, oh. who I posted this morning. He's, he's the one that suggested this. So, Gate Call, good job. If we end up using it, you get a free month VIP membership. We'll, we'll oh, so, wow. that also means there's a little competition, guys. If you want a free month, <laughs> give us your uh, show ideas. And, you know, if, if we decide that there's something that we like a little bit better, you know, you might get that free month. Yeah. I like Tunnel Vision, though. I think it's cool. Because um, we're Tunnel Vision on USC, but also Tunnel Vision. Yeah, we're coming out of the tunnel of the Coliseum, you know, all that kind of stuff. And the Peristyle is where we do all our stuff. So, um, yeah. So, I think we'll start. Oh, we Ky Sorry. Kyle Miyamoto says, uh, via YouTube, no pick, no sound. Really? So, I don't know. I think he's just commenting. No, that's true. Yeah, so maybe uh, YouTube isn't quite working. So we'll have to. That's maybe that's one of the reasons we test. Tweet that out. Um, it looks like Facebook Live is working, so that's yes. good. Um, it's probably bad that YouTube is not working, but we'll we'll see what we can do. Yeah, beta um, show, like we said. <laughs> beta show, yeah, and then Periscope. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. Hopefully that one's working too. So yeah, it's a Wirecast is a it's a really cool program. It's a little complicated. Um, looks it, like it's working on YouTube from my computer. Oh. So. Yeah, Shotgun's got YouTube up. For me. Oh, YouTube. Oh, okay. 
Kyle, what the heck are you talking about? You're, you're no. bringing us down, Kyle. Don't be the downer guy. Oh, wow. Uh, we love Kyle, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, Christian on YouTube says that it's working for him, Seth as well. Um, so I'll be monitoring the YouTube comments. Okay, you wow. can monitor your YouTube if we see anything good. Um, I don't know if we can do the Periscope, but we'll try that, that's, too. That's your job. <laughs> uh, yeah. Travis okay. says we hear you loud and direct on Facebook. Thanks, Travis. Sweet. Okay, so so far beta is going okay. And what's our... Mm -hmm. There's so... I had to get a beefier computer, so I bought this super gamer computer. It's like lights up and everything, because the old computer I had it wasn't that old, but it didn't have all the like, you know, core quad processor <laughs> stuff and everything. So this is like for hardcore gamers. If you want all the graphics and stuff to work, to to make all these three broadcasts work at the same time, you need a lot of computing power. That's all how the sausage is made. What are the data? What's the number showing? Like? We're at twenty. We we're hovering between nineteen and twenty six. That's like the range right now. Oh yeah, so, so that's perfect. We, yeah, we before, were in like eighties and nineties. Yeah, it was a hundred. Like it would peg the CPU and stuff. So that it's not even taxing the CPU. So the computer is good. This is really like the first time. Yeah, this is the inaugural. Uh, what do they call them? The ship maiden voyage. Is Our the maiden, maiden voyage. voyage. Um, Kyle says that he's watching on the TV YouTube app. Yeah, well, that's you know, intense. I don't write, know. Write your congressman, Kyle. What do you want me to do, man? Like, come on. <laughs> no, I don't know the TV YouTube app. Like, so we'll take a look at it. Uh, you know, yeah. we'll see what we can do. But, but on YouTube is actually working. So if you go there, maybe you can try that. Maybe just go into the website on your phone. Maybe that works. Uh, if you're on, if you're doing it mobily, if not, uh, you know, trying that. Uh, if you're on the uh, on the TV, maybe there, there's a little bit of a difference there. I don't know if there, there's another route through your TV to watch it, uh, but we'll we'll try to take a look at it. Thanks for the comments, uh, and we're trying to figure this stuff out with you guys as well, yeah. uh, especially because we're putting it in different places. So we're trying to, and especially now with how everything is with streaming, you know, with people cutting the cores and different things. So now people did. are getting their YouTube through their TV and different yes. things. So, so thanks for the comments, Kyle. Uh, you know, we'll try to take a look at it and see if we, if there's anything we can do about it. If not, then maybe you just have to grab the laptop and put it in your lap and, you know, watch this from there as well. Put a movie on in the background. Yeah. You know. Okay. Let's get into the of football. People are, are over our beta show. Let's, okay, let's get into the topics. Pac-12 Media Day was yesterday. It was yeah. a marathon. They convinced, they condensed it into one day. So all 12 teams went into one day. Um, what were your guys' overall thoughts from Pac-12 Media Day? It was packed. Uh, I mean, I, you know, it, it was a little better than I thought it might be. Larry Scott's just kind of Larry Scott where his comments about, like, money doesn't matter and all this stuff. I mean, it's just like, you know, Dan asked him, you know, basically the Big Ten over the next, to the, the next six years is going to make about a billion and a half more than the Pac-12 in general, like that's a that's you know life-changing money, conference-changing money, and Larry Scott's like, oh, we've never needed money. Well, we don't really just look at money. You know, yeah. we still think we're on the top of the pyramid. That was right. his phrase, and I was like, top of what pyramid? What what pyramid are you talking about? Because right before that, he was talking about international and you know, going to Australia and different things. I was like, are they actually going to Egypt and playing games? Like, yeah. that's the only way you're on the top of a pyramid. Now he keeps throwing out, hey, we have the most championships and. You know, obviously, you have Stanford, UCLA, and USC have the most championships of any schools in, in the nation uh, you know, over history. And technically, the Pac-12 does have the most championships year in and year out. A lot of those are, are championships in sports that other, team, I mean, other schools across the country don't necessarily play. You know, there's some West Coast sports where it's, you know, beach sports where they're not played uh, in other parts. Right. You know, Penn State doesn't have a big water polo team. No. I mean, you know, Maine isn't really big in, into beach volleyball, even though they got, they got a beach. But it's a little bit too cold out there to get out in the bikini there. So, you know, the, those type of, of sports where you can rack up championships to an extent. And granted, there are some really good programs yeah. in those sports in, in the Pac-12. And the Pac-12 won those before Larry Scott got there. Yeah. It's not like yeah. he's changed it, like now the Pac-12 wins. Like, it, it's always been the case. Like, that hasn't changed. What you pointed out was, when's the last time they won a men's basketball, women's basketball, or football national title? And it's been a while. Yeah. So, obviously, USC's championship in 2004 is the last football championship. Men's basketball has been since 1997, so 21 years there. I think that was Arizona. Uh, yeah. And then 1992 for women's basketball. And women's basketball is, is usually pretty good in the Pac-12. Yeah, but Stanford's usually pretty good. USC was great in the 80s. Stanford has, has not won a title since 1992. So it's been 26 years since a women's basketball team. So that that is the... 
you know, the bell cow sports on the yeah. women's side, women's basketball, followed by softball, and, and the Pac-12 is usually really good in softball, but even softball, they've kind of declined a little bit, used to just dominate in softball. Now you've seen the SEC invest more money in it, and they've won more championships. Oklahoma won this year. So you're seeing where, you know, other teams are gaining ground on, on the Pac-12, or other conferences are gaining ground on the Pac-12, and the Pac-12 is gaining no ground at all in the three, you know, the – uh, revenue sports, they're actually declining, and their revenue is declining. Right. And if you're falling $1.5 billion, and you say, no, it's not a, we, we don't really measure ourselves just by financial. Yeah, yeah. success is, a, you know, winning, winning national ch- championships in football and making a lot of money. That's not how we judge success. But he's very successful because he's the highest paid commissioner that we have in the, in the nation. So like, well, your your conference makes the least and you get paid the most, he's got a pretty good gig. Dan pretty said he was being on best behavior because he wanted to ask that as a follow-up question, but he was like, I didn't want to be too mean. So, yeah. but it's a good point to bring up. But I think overall it was pretty good. I, I thought it's kind of, it just doesn't look all that perfect. It doesn't make the perception of the conference look much better when you cut it down from two days to one. Um, you know, people are like, well, is there just not much going on here? Is it, it's not that important? All that stuff. So I think you, you kind of perception wise, you almost need to have it two days. But a lot of the media people I talk to seem to like the one day thing. And it depends if you're only talking to for one team or if you're trying to get stuff from everybody. If you're trying to get stuff from everybody, it's a little harder to do all that in one day. But Yeah, because I, I compare it to, to college baseball where I cover the entire Pac-12, the entire West Coast. If it was similar... I would have been run ragged yesterday yeah. because, you know, if you're one of the national guys that's trying to get stuff on every school, uh, you know, if you sit down with a coach and you get 10 minutes with each coach, that's two hours right there of, of stuff you're going to have to transcribe later, yeah. and that's just 10 minutes. And that's not including talking to any of the players at all or anything. And then, like, it was kind of a marathon day. I mean, we all got there early even though USC wasn't going early. And, you know, we were worn down by the end of the day. It's like this is, you know, this is kind of – you know, takes a lot out of you to, to be around and, and try to go through everything there. So I know the players as well. I know Cam Smith, uh, when Keeley finished her interview with him, he was just kind of like, <sighs> Cam Smith in my interview was losing his train of thought. He was just like, sorry, okay. <laughs> like, like, just, and this, was at like, this was at like 4 o'clock, and he still had another hour or so to go, hour and a half. Before we started our interview, he kind of asked the SID, like, hey, is this the last one? And he was like, not by a long <laughs> shot. And he was like, I'm so hungry right now. So it's it's brutal for everyone involved. Yeah, it was, it's rough. Um, and, and you kind of tell the difference. I mean, we talk about revenue and stuff between the, the conferences, but what does the SEC do with their, their media day? Four days. Oh, wait, it's four days long. There's fans there. There's people throwing high fives and stuff. As people Like, there's tunnels as people are walking in, speaking of the tunnel vision. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's a completely different demographic. It's a completely different um, kind of atmosphere, I guess. Now, they do a really good job at the Hollywood Highland uh, uh, setup there that they have. It's been really nice being over there for a couple years in a row after they kind of moved around to different movie lots. And sometimes things were a little... You know, thrown together at the last minute, it seemed like, to, at some of the other places. So they've done a good job, you know, with the accommodations and everything. But, you know, I, I preferred it more with two days. Uh, I like getting free food for two days, obviously. Uh, but it also, you know, it separates things and it gives people an opportunity to, to spend a little bit more time with, with people instead of, you know, those players being rushed around yesterday. Yeah. Like, you know, Cam Smith and Port Augustine, they did a bunch of stuff on the backside for Pac-12 and, you know, doing promos and different stuff. They had a trapeze that, that Keely and I tried to get to, but we couldn't, uh, we couldn't break our way in. Um, but then, you know, they, besides doing the, the stuff you'll see on camera with us, you know, the, we're, we're breaking up some of the video from, from their scrums where they were during their allotted time when, when they were on stage. Besides that, they also ran through Radio Row. It was just 12, 14 different radio setups that were – Five to ten, fifteen minute interviews, and then also you know separate video interviews. There were there were two uh, live TV stage setups that those guys are running through, and then they sat down and talked with us for another thirty minutes, just you know just uh, kind of chatting at a table with everyone. So you know I, I felt for those guys at the end of the day, and you could see that they were kind of worn out by it. I think I think they were probably more worn out by yesterday than they will be when they play some of the games this year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, well, sorry, I'm going to go. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, you can go in. Real quick, so I do see a little problem. So there's a scroll down the bottom, like a little crawl. Do you see yeah. that? So I put all the schedules in there, but it, it's cutting off after Texas. I think it might be limited characters or something oh. on the scroll. I don't know. I'm going to figure that out, but 
You that's guys only need the first couple of games. You yes, only need, we'll yeah, okay. just so you can see those. But that's little toys we're playing with here. Yes. We're going to go into questions now. Oh. Uh, just because Travis kind of starts us off with, so far, what is the general consensus about the team this season? As far as Pac-12 Media Day, USC was voted to win the South, but not win the Pac-12 uh, Conference. Uh, Washington, UW, was actually voted to win the conference. So, yeah. Uh, but what were your guys' thoughts about the team? Oh, by the way, you can see down below, you can see the questions. See if you know right there, Travis, you're it's there. Neat. Thanks, your, Travis. your cool stunner shades in your profile picture. Yeah, I think we were doing this before, too, and we the, some of the pictures weren't showing up. So now you can see your picture. We can see all that kind of stuff. Um, general consensus. Talk to some USC kind of fans slash media people that were there at, uh, at Pac-12 Media Day yesterday. It just seems to be kind of a... A mixed bag. I mean, I think there's going to be the mo they're going to be the most talented team in the conference, even more than Washington overall talent wise. But there's a lot of people that aren't really sure if this is a team that's going to win. I picked I picked Utah to win the the South. I could easily see USC trucking through everything and, and winning the South again. But I think this is a, a good year for Utah. But there's some questions for me still that you know they got to put it together. They could it could be all put together. I think they're going to be really deep on defense and stuff. I don't know if there's some kind of general consensus, but there's some. Um, people, you know, tempered views, I guess, towards what USC is going to be this year. I think the general consensus is that the defense has to carry the team early, and then they need a quarterback to emerge. So, uh, you know, talking to Cam Smith and Porter Gustin, both of those, those guys, you know, they didn't say it was pressure, that they didn't feel the extra pressure to carry the team, but they felt that the defense kind of had to, you know, carry the load early, and then we'll see what comes with the quarterback situation. Does JT Daniels come in and blow us away in fall camp? We'll see. Yeah. Do, does one of the other guys emerge? Neither one of them did, Jack Sears or Matt Fink, during the spring. They had an opportunity to push themselves above. And, you know, I was kind of talking with, with uh, someone yesterday about it, is those two guys easily, if they had strong springs, they didn't have to separate from each other, but they could have been here and JT Daniels would have started here right. for fall camp. Instead... It's basically an even race yeah, going in. It's, it's whatever it is the perception of it. Now, maybe those guys have a little bit of an advantage just by experience, but instead of being here, they're they're yeah. much closer to here. So they they did not prove themselves in the spring. They had the opportunity to kind of push themselves ahead, either one of them or both of them, uh, and they did not do that. So they have to come out and, and show something in the fall. They can't just you know expect that one of them is going to automatically get the job because they're the older guys. I think this is much different than the Max Brown – Sam Darnold, sure. different, not not much different, just because of the the discrepancy in the experience. I mean, Max Brown had played a little bit more than Matt Fink. He also was a, a redshirt junior, I believe, at the time. Um, so yeah. you know, there's a lot of, of years difference there versus you know J T. Daniels coming in as a true freshman and Sam Darnold as a redshirt freshman. I think. I think the biggest issue though is the early part of the schedule. So it looks like it could potentially start like 2016. Uh, where, you know, could USC be one and two? Easily you could go on the road and lose to Stanford and Texas. You know, Texas nearly beat USC in the Coliseum last year with Sam Darnold and with all those guys. So, I mean, that if you if this team starts off one and two with no experience at quarterback and all that kind of, I, you know, there's some, there's potential problems down the road. That Arizona game, uh, week five, is, good, is a potential trap game after Washington State on a Friday night. I mean, that's why there's just enough questions for me that I didn't pick USC to, to win the South, but easily they I mean it could get they could find their way and, and put it all together early in fall camp and just start rolling. For me, the DNA of this team has never been defense run the football kind of team. I know that people talk about that and you want to do that, but this is just a team that always seem to if you don't have great quarterback play, it's hard to, for me to see a USC team win. Every quarterback for the last 20 years is, that's regular start has been drafted, right? Like there's not one that's gone by. There was like a regular starter that didn't get drafted in the NFL. They've always had a stud. Um, if they don't find their stud early, they could start in the hole, and then who knows? And and you're basically relying on a kid that's supposed to be in high school, which could be good. Like he's he's amazing, but you're still relying on that. So and there's questions for me, and I think there's for others too. Sorry, I knew you were about to cut in. Can I just? Uh are we still good on Facebook Live? Mine keeps cutting out. If you guys have problems, just let me know because mine keeps saying that the video is interrupted. I don't know if that's just a me thing, but. Mine's showing live, but it's been kind of, you know. It's kind of jumpy. I don't know if that's just me or if that's actually our broadcast. So we'll see. Let yeah, let us know. Put it put it in the comments there. Mine looks good. Oh, okay. I think. Apparently, Maybe YouTube I'm... is running smoothly. YouTube is running smoothly. Yeah, it's okay. it looks behind. It looks fairly behind because it just showed me pointing down, like that was a while ago, but. I thought it was really interesting hearing from Helton. He was kind of laying the groundwork 
Um, he was very clear. It says it's ended. That's what I'm saying. Not Is interrupted, it? but ended. Oh. Really? That's why they call it a beta show, folks. Testing stuff out. Yeah, it went 14 minutes and then it ended. Or it's just like five minutes of us staring. Oh, it's weird. No, it just ended. Oh, it did? You're right. Dun, 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 dun. How did that happen? Oh, it's blink. It's the stream is blinking yellow and green. That button. And YouTube's still going, right? YouTube is still going. Wow. Hello, YouTubers. Thanks, <laughs> uh, well, it might be. Let me look. Hold on. While they go over that, I was going to point out, point out a. a uh, seeing that uh, since Ryan brought up the schedule, you know, something that's interesting to me is that not only is that schedule, do you play some tough teams at the beginning of the season, but you also, you have very diverse teams that you're playing. After you, after they beat UNLV, which if they don't beat UNLV, then, you know, maybe you, you, uh, you eliminate some players off the team immediately. Like that shouldn't happen. So after you beat UNLV, then you play a physical team in Stanford. You play a super athletic team in Texas. Then you play Washington State and their air raid offense on. And now the live stream is offline. Yeah, we did it. He did it. Oh. <laughs> Probably should have told you while you were talking. Oh, are we back here? Is it back? Yep, I'm back on. Wow. This is kind of freaky. This is weird. <laughs> when are we live? When are we not? Daryl says probably should have beta tested first. This, this is, is the beta test. test. This is beta test. This is what I was saying. <laughs> we said beta test from the very beginning. That's this is why I wanted to do it, not live. Well, I don't. I mean, I'm not sure what this was. Like, it just kind of stopped in the middle. That's what I'm uh, saying. We could have seen it. Right. Well, let's see. Let's see if Facebook's coming back. Uh, I think yours is just playing the old one. Should I just? No, it's not. It's not back. It's not Should back. Should probably put Travis's question back so he doesn't have to be associated with this. Yeah. Uh, back to what I was saying. Then you get Washington State on a short week, and then you have a super athletic quarterback in Khalil Tate that gives everyone trouble. Uh, I think that, that not only are you are playing tough teams, but you have four diverse opponents there that are going to challenge you in different ways each week. So I think that's going to be really tough for USC to go from week to week and, and play against those teams. So I, I think that, you know, I think there's losses in there. I don't think the USC makes it out unscathed. If they do, after week five, that's when I'm calling them a national title contender. If they if they're five and zero after week five, I'm calling them a national title contender. Do you think that's possible? Do I think it's possible? Mm, not really. I think there's losses there. I think because of the way the teams are playing and how you have to bounce back and forth between playing you know a physical, super physical Stanford team, you're going to get beat up a bit. You're probably going to lose a player or two because that always happens against Stanford. To then go to Texas and they have a ton of athletes on that team, then come back on a short week against Mike Leach, who you know him and that's going to be fun to watch again. Got to, chess you know, match. We, we talked about it before. Yes, Cam chess Smith match. talked about it yesterday when oh, really? he was he was asked about uh, his like best matchup or players that are hard to go up against. He mentioned Luke Falk, which he already he's not there anymore, but he mentioned him and he was like I watched so much table Luke Falk <laughs> and e but even still on the field it was like we were battling back and forth. He was like as I was making changes, he was making changes and I was just like I, I wanted him to go into it more because it was really interesting but he kind of mentioned that so yeah, and watching watching Leach and Pendergast go back and forth because you see them on the sideline looking over. Okay, I see what personnel they're. Okay, put this. In <laughs> yeah, yeah. And both of them are going, you know, just uh, chess matching it, and, you know, wizard, uh, mind wizarding each other, <laughs> trying to. Uh, so you know that's that's always a fun matchup, just seeing those those two coaches going against each other, in my opinion. But to do that on a short week again, I think that's a challenge in and of itself, um, even though you are playing at home. But then you go and you place a you go from a completely stationary quarterback who's going to stay in the pocket. You're going to air raid quick passes everywhere to having Khalil Tate who's going to extend every play and, on the road too. Yeah, on the road. So I think three you know three of those four games being on the road that is a super tough stretch. I don't think USC makes it out unscathed. Yeah. They do national title contenders. I mean, isn't that crazy that half of USC's essentially half of USC's season again is in September? It's crazy. Five weekends in September. Well, last year, their entire season was just <laughs> together. I yeah. mean, because you had 12 weeks in a row without uh, without having a week off. So, Hey, so it looks like the Facebook one did stop and it's not um, restarted. But for whatever reason, YouTube like restarted, so it's still oh. going. So 
Hello. If you're anyone. watching on YouTube, we don't we still don't know about Periscope, so that's like the you know the thing. But I don't I'm, have Periscope I, on my phone. I'm embedding this on uh, our the message board just so people so people know. So there's a beta test. So I'm sorry. I don't know why Facebook one stopped, but I'm sure Keely did something. You know that's probably what we're figures. Just kidding. Just figures. Um, I'll tweet this out too, so people will. Um, we can also put it in the comments on the Facebook. So we'll get to you guys, your guys' questions here in a second. Yeah, we um, still have some comment, Facebook so we comments YouTube. we can use. Oh, and YouTube, YouTube questions and YouTube. as well. Um, let's see. Oh, and I can still put them up, right? Because even though yeah, they're, yeah, they're still there. Should be. Um, let's see. There's actually one I wanted to address up here. Someone asked about practices. Uh, it's the same thing that happened last year. Their USC's compliance is saying that fans can't be there during August because it's a dead period. Um, the reason why there were fans last season is because uh, fall camp started earlier in July, so they let fans come in those couple July practices, but now that fall camp starts on August 3rd, it is closed to the public. So that's a new thing. Eh, was was new. last year, do you remember if it was closed last year? It was. I was saying it, yeah. the, co they, the couple practices in July those were open. Oh, yeah, And then yeah, once it okay. turned August, they were like, oh, compliance says we can. So it was and the then, same rules. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, the it's, same dumb rules. It's, it's a pretty silly rule, yeah. So basically what they're saying is that if they have an open practice and a recruit comes, a prospect comes, it's a dead period. They're not allowed to talk to the coaches. So what if they walked into practice and talked to a coach? So, but it's... Yeah, it's open to the public. It doesn't make any sense. They could randomly, you can walk on campus wherever you want. So what if a prospect happens to bump into Clay Helton on campus? <gasps> you can walk there. Like, So you have to close campus because it's a dead period because that's where it's the close yeah. everything down. Yeah. Um, so. Let's go to Richard, who says, who is still out and injured for starter practice? Who has been officially cleared? And Helton kind of uh, clarified that yesterday. He said that Marlon, Marlon Tuipolotu and Stephen Carr are officially cleared for fall camp. I believe Stephen Carr said... Uh, tweeted they just left me let me off the leash so that was a little uh, uh -oh. sign that he was uh oh yep he's ready um, but when talking about Daniel Amarabebe uh, Clay Helton was a little bit more cautious with his wording he didn't directly say that Daniel was clear for fall camp they said they're going to ease him back in um, so uh, uh, the varying differences of who's cleared who's not but that's the news we got as far as injuries and whatnot yeah uh, anything else anything else add? about that I I wasn't there for Clay's scrum so if he said anything else he was so he was asked about Stephen Carr um, so that was like you know the main thing where he's cleared but they're gonna you know they're not gonna throw him right into uh, the contact stuff at practice yet so he's gonna be brought along slowly same thing with Marlon uh, Tui Pelotu so I think for that kind of stuff you'll see him moving along and but that, that was really the only injured guys that he had talked about in the scrum and we we have the, all that stuff is up there on the site if you want to read the transcript. So Tui Pelotu and Stephen Carr are cleared. Um, Daniel Morabebe getting there, not quite. He also talked a little bit about Trayvon Sidney coming back from, um, I believe, a hip. I'm not sure what he said about it, Trayvon Sidney. Ankle? I, I thought it was, was hip, or maybe it was hip original. He had a hip last year. So maybe it was an ankle thing or something. I just pulled a Clay Hilton. He had a hip. <laughs> he had a hip. Instead of a hip he's injury. He's got a hamstring. He's, he's got, got a, a He's got a foot. He's got of an elbow. Of course he's got two of those. So. <laughs> he's got an eyebrow. Um, so uh, those are the guys he mentioned in his sit-down with us afterwards. I think he mentioned one other player, but uh, it was that the player was cleared. So uh, I don't think there's a lot of lingering injuries. I know I talked to Greg Johnson uh, a week and a half ago. He said he should be cleared for fall camp as well. Um, he was not cleared during the spring for full contact, but he is now. So he should be good to go. Looking forward to seeing him. I think uh, you know he's got a chance to work his way into that rotation. Even that, that secondary is going to be super deep this year. Speaking um, of which, we have a question about that. I'm just um, leading you into it. Yeah. David King Daniel says, who's going to start at safety next to Marvell Tell? Good question. Um, and Marvell Tell basically said that he doesn't have an opinion on it. You know, he, he said that, you know, he thinks that all those guys over there have an opportunity to participate, and he's going to trust the coaches. They're going to put the best guy there. I think Bubba Bolden is probably your front runner right now. I think he's gotten most of, of the first team reps. Uh, or I take that back, actually. Um, the, depending on the formation and how they do, if it's a straight nickel, then, you know, maybe Akili Ross, because he's been back there as well. 
Um, Bubba Bolton, the, of the young guys, has got the best opportunity to, to break into that mix. Um, I think they're going to use a couple different guys, and I think that's a, a thing with, with the nickelback. I think they can go dime a lot this year because you got Jonathan Lockett, you got right. Janae Harris, you got Yahili, you can put it in, in there uh, in the slot. So, you know, I think they got some options. I would. I would roll with some dime a little bit more often, you know, when you play some teams that pass, you know, at least half the time. Not when you're playing Stanford, obviously, but you know, some of these other teams uh, that when you would normally just be a nickel, I think I'd roll some dime out there a little bit more uh, and and use it like they used it against uh, they used dime defense against Washington State and maybe a little bit here and there. But I would use it more on like, hey, it's third and eight. We're figuring they're gonna pass. We're put the dime package out there. Get some you know pass rushers on the edge. You know, uh, spread Christian Rector out wide because he's going to play some inside a little bit on that in in position. Um, I put him out on the outside linebacker spot, let him rush the passer. I would do some, you know, have a pass package basically, a pass rush package, and include that as a dime. So I, I think that the secondary has a lot of options though with it. You know, whoever they put there, um, you know, if someone gets hurt, Marvell Tell gets hurt, you can slide someone over because you got some guys that that, that have worked their way into that mix. Yeah, you got to watch that. The, I mean. The whole defense this year is going to be very – and if you want to use a lot of dime, the problem is you're going to be taking linebackers or defensive linemen off the, the field too. And they're deep everywhere right now. Um, you have Jonathan Lockett and Ajana Harris who could both be the starting nickel. Maybe you, you know, Lockett will play some corner. I mean, there, there's some options there. Or they rotate a bunch of guys. And you have guys coming in and out. And even with Jack Jones gone, I mean, you love some of the, the cornerback play from the freshman Isaac Taylor Stewart and Elijah Griffin and, of course, Iman Marshall out there. I mean, there's a lot of options, like Shotgun was saying. How are they going to do it? If you, you put an extra DB, that's great, but uh, I want to see Levi Jones. Oh, there's a lot of guys you want to see that are linebackers. And, and how many defensive linemen are there? Like, do you want to put Brandon Peely and Marlon Tui Pelotu and Jay Tufel and put all these dudes out there? And six linebackers in this incoming class right. as well. So there's a lot. Like, I'm not sure what you're going to do, but it's very deep. I think he, Clancy Pendergast, the defensive coordinator, almost has to rotate more. That's not been in his DNA either, but there's just too many dudes that can play that I think he will trust to play, but we just haven't seen him do that and rotate, you know, really at any time at USC. Well, that's what he always says is like, I will put out as many players as I trust, basically. So if that's, if he trusts 11 guys, only 11 guys are going to play. If he trusts 15 guys, then, you know, they'll rotate four guys in. You know, Cam Smith said yesterday, you know, I think we can, you know, we might get to 20 to 30 guys that we, that we trust. And Cam Smith used the word trust in there. Like, yeah. you know, he knows the what what gets uh, gets you on the field with Clancy. So, you know, that's what he basically said. He's like, I think we can develop that depth to where we have enough guys we trusted to put in there that, you know, we don't have to be tired at the end of the game. Now, is Cam Smith ever coming off the field? No. <laughs> Probably not, yeah. Oh, there's the there's a non-rotation spot, yeah. Yeah, and, and Iman Marshall, uh, and a couple comments in here about Iman Marshall moving to safety in some dime packages. No. Iman Marshall is going to be on the outside. Iman Marshall looks like a different dude this spring. Uh, he just looks super focused, laser focused. I've talked with a couple people about him. You know, they see it too. Um, and, and Cam Smith, I asked him about it yesterday, and he said, you know, it's it's when you get to your last year. And he said, I feel it too. You know, the, they have a core group of guys that have been playing for four years now, or this will be their fourth year. He, Porter Gustin, uh, Iman Marshall, and Marvell Tell, a couple other guys on that defense that, you know, they've been playing a long time together, and they kind of feel it like, hey, this is our last chance. We have to make stuff happen. And for, for Iman Marshall, for Biggie, you know, he was – seen as the number one cornerback in the country, and he wants to live up that billing. I know that's something that, that kind of eats at him, that you know he has a chip on his shoulder, that, that people think he's underachieved at times. Yeah, he didn't want to be here for a senior year. Yeah, yeah. he wanted to be gone. He, and, you know, he didn't have as good of a year as he wanted last year. He had uh, some injuries that kind of held him back. Uh, and he came back, and he was really good at the end of the season. Um, so I think he can easily build on that. And what we saw in the spring, as long as he stays healthy, I think he's going to have a really big year. Speaking of that. At cornerback. <laughs> Not safety. Not safety. Speaking of the defense, it, you could tell from both Cam and Porter that they were like, we're not messing around. We all know as a defense, know what we're doing. They even said they take tests now. This is new this year. They take mm -hmm. tests. Um, they'll show a defense, and they, they have to label where everyone should be. They'll show offense. They'll show where everyone should be and everyone's responsibility. That's something new. Um, and Cam said that as a defense, they came together and said, we should make fall camp as hard as we can for all three quarterbacks. Because he was like, we know our defense. Why not test the, the quarterbacks and see who can, who can be the best against us? So it's interesting how that defense, when they come together, they can do um, uh, good stuff for both the defense and the offense. 
And Port Augustine said a very similar thing. Uh, I actually saw your tweet about Cam Smith and decided to ask the same question <laughs> to Port Augustine uh, across the room. But I asked him about, you know, the, their responsibility as a defense to prepare those quarterbacks and, and also give as good of a look as they can so that, you know, the coaches can pick the best quarterback. And if yeah. you go easy, then, you know, somebody is can beat you in seven-on-seven seven basically because you're not really trying to pa- rush the passer – then you get in the game and that quarterback's not the same in pads, you know, then you as a defense, you have failed your team because you have not prepared and helped get the best guy out there. So he said, as a defense, it's our job to never lay off the pedal. Just go at it all the time. Really put those quarterbacks under stress and try to uh, to simulate what it's like in a tough game atmosphere for them. And that's basically, and then then out of that, you'll get the best guy. And and I think that's the, the best way the defense can go at it. And plus, they want to whip the tail uh, of the offense at all times. I mean, there's always that competition, offense yeah. versus defense. So uh, I, I think you'll see, and with that defense and the veteran guys on there, I think you can you know, see a really competitive. Uh, well, and you know, maybe it won't be competitive. Maybe they're just going to dominate during fall camp, and which was kind of similar to spring camp. You know, the the defense dominated, and that was part of the reason why the offense didn't look good. The offensive line has to step up, and I know that's something that's been emphasized. You know, being more physical. Uh, you know, since that Ohio State game, Port Augustine talked about it having to, trying to have a culture change because people realized that you know they got pushed around that game, especially up front. They had some young guys, they had some injuries, but those are the guys that have to perform now. Yep. So. Uh, we'll see if that offensive line does any better in fall camp or or if we should be concerned going into the season. Well, there's also a difference in fall camp, which is segueing to my next question. Uh, Andrew says, how is JT Daniels looking in practice, and what do you put his odds to win the job at? JT Daniels. Andrew looks very happy in his Facebook picture. He does. With his girlfriend. His girlfriend or something. Nice as well. Yeah. baby friend. We don't know the situation. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry, we didn't mean to throw you under the bus. <laughs> Andrew's only not even watching, and he's like, what? He's okay. like, that's my sister. Sorry, yeah. Andrew. I like that we can see people's pictures. This I know. Cool. Even people, though the Facebook the faces list to the name. Even Ryan, the Facebook Ryan list. likes to comment on those pictures. We also got a yeah. comment that Ryan should talk more. So, Ryan, what do you think about JT Daniels? Uh, he's looked really, really good uh, at these practices. I mean, he does not – you look at him – Physically, we were at uh, Pac-12 Media Day yesterday, and you saw Jake Browning walking around, right? And he's the you know All-American potential quarterback for for Washington. He looked like a guy, like he didn't look You're like the dude or anything. Time. Like he looked, and we got shotgun. Yeah. Um, that's why I don't talk, because the shotgun does crap like that. <laughs> no, so he he just looked like a dude. But you saw Justin Herbert. And he looks like an NFL quarterback. His hands were huge. He's a big dude. And when you see JT Daniels walk in, he looked like a guy. He looked like a guy that was ready to be a college quarterback. So I think he's looking the part. He got bigger. We saw him run the ball more. He got faster. Um, He's been really impressive to me. And he throws a really nice ball. And I think he's got a great connection with Amon Ross St. Brown, his teammate coming in. I think that's helped him a lot. But... He's thrown the ball to Michael Pittman and Tyler Vaughns and the rest of the guys, and it just seems like he's fitting in really well. So we're shocked. I talked about either Matt Fink or Jack Sears, who had some really good moments in the spring, but some not-so-good moments too. They just didn't kind of raise their game, and one of them didn't just grab the reins and take control of the, the quarterback competition. That allowed the opportunity for JT Daniels to come in and do what he's going to do. Plus, we weren't sure. We might not have seen JT Daniels till the end of fall camp. We didn't know. When we found out in the spring that it was, he was going to be around June 8th, that changed the game too. So yeah. there was a lot of things that kind of helped JT Daniels and maybe didn't help the other two guys. So it's it's made it a closer race than you know a lot of people thought it might be. What do you perceive of Clay Helton making multiple points that uh, it's they're, all three quarterbacks are essentially starting fresh at fall camp? And he made it a clear point that youth is not a deterrent in who's going to be the starting quarterback. So, and Clay Hilton, he's not very, he doesn't come out and say things unless he's laying the foundation for something. Do you read into that? Do you read the tea leaves at all? I mean, potentially. I mean, I think JT Daniels is the favorite to win the starting job right now. And, you know, it sounds like he was kind of laying the groundwork, like he was saying, that, you know, don't be shocked if you're starting a guy in college who should really still be, uh, you know, looking forward to his senior prom. Like, no, he's, you know, he's got that potential. Now, maybe that's just to, to let people know, hey, it's going to be open and we're not just going to only look at Matt Fink because he's the only one that's played in the game or anything like that. So um, I don't know if it means everything, but I think it means something. One other thing that's helping JT Daniels get, that could possibly give him an early opportunity, the new redshirt rule. Yeah. 
you know, he could play in four games, and, you know, they may decide, whereas before they may be like, oh, we don't want to burn his red shirt. We're not sure if he's the guy. Now maybe you throw him in against, uh, you know, you throw him in early against UNLV and Stanford, and you see, okay, yeah. he either gets it or he doesn't. Is he shell-shocked, or is he like, oh, no, he's he's in? Yeah, so if he's shell-shocked, you say, okay, we got to go with the veteran guy, and we keep him there, and then if you have an injury later in the season, or you need, or you, you know, the light comes on, as, as Clay Hilton likes to say, later in the season, then maybe you give JT Daniels another two-game, you know, a little trial run, and if he's ready, then he takes over. Mm-hmm. If not, then you go, you know, you use him in a couple of, you know, similar to how they did Sam Darnold those first four games sure. where he had a couple of series. You use him there and kind of give him that. And if he's not ready, you say, you know what, we're going to redshirt you. And we'll just, we'll just save this year, and you'll have it if you need it. Because, uh, you know, we from what we've seen at JT, we don't think he's going to need, you know, four years at USC or, you know, the five years with the redshirt. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. But that gives them an extra opportunity, an extra, you know, an extra option to say, let's try him real quick and see how it works. And if it doesn't work, we can go back to those other yeah. guys. All the coaches do like that new rule. Or would, they would like to see it even. Not like ex- it. They love it. Yeah, or extended to where it's not just four games, but you could just play for five years. But then, then you're being very different than all the other sports, and they're trying not to separate football from everything else. Even though football makes, you know, 100 times more money than everything else, they still want to treat it the same, which I think is silly. But we have any other? So I like that. So... Uh, we get a lot of comments on YouTube, too. We so. do. We get some interesting comments, too. Yeah. Shout out to Brandon for spelling my name right. And also, uh, Is That Right 2012 says, Ryan is the sexy male host that can carry this show. Because <laughs> he's not hosting. <laughs> Who said that one? Uh, is, is That, that right? right 2012. Oh, thank you, Is That Right. Uh, I don't know. I'm the old. I could be their parent. Like, that's the problem. That's the six-year-old comment because his, his handle is 2012. It's so. Ryan's oh. burner. That's why he was distracted. He was typing that. To Should try have known. and hype himself up. Yeah, we're trying to figure this out. We'll, hopefully, this will uh, be a lot smoother. Like, like We just want to do a beta test, but this is good. We, you know, Some of the stuff we wouldn't have been able to find out. We can still do a show, but it's still more of a, like, hey, look at everything and figure out what's going on. Is that right? 2012 says, I'll DM you later. So, <laughs> what, is that, what do the kids say? Slide into the DMs? Yeah. And stuff? yeah. yeah. Wow, so. <laughs> I am married, though. Is that right? Wow. Maybe that is your wife. <laughs> hey, honey, LV Live that, yeah. says, how are the young freshman DBs looking? To get back to football. <laughs> Studly. I mean, I think even like a Chase Williams, you don't talk about. He came in the spring. He looked pretty good. But I love Isaac Taylor Stewart and uh, Elijah no Griffin. To on Elijah the, Griffin. Yeah. On the first freshman PRP, he had like three pass pass breakups. He looked like he was like a sophomore returning. Like, hey, it's a PRP. Let me just get out there. And I was like, <laughs> this is your first practice at USC. Practice in quotes. Uh, it was pretty impressive. You know, I didn't see too much from those guys. I missed that practice, and Some then. More practice. The, you know, they didn't do a bunch of the, the practices I went to because I was only able to go once a week uh, because of my work schedule. So I didn't see too much from those guys. Uh, you know who I was impressed with? Isaiah Langley, an older guy. I think Isaiah Langley is the front runner for that spot on the other side. Not just the front runner, he's the incumbent now uh, after spring. Um, uh, with Jack Jones gone, I think it's his to take over. And he, he seems super focused too. You know, I, I talked to him previously and then also, you know, in the last week about. You know the kind of the the journey he's went through at USC. You know, early when he when he first got here, he's with the old coaching staff. He was getting some early playing time as a freshman. He gets arrested uh, over at UCLA in the off season of his freshman year. He also lost his mom that off season. So and he lost his confidence as well. It was a tough you know situation for him, and it took him a year and a half or so to, to regain his confidence and really get back in the flow. And I think now he he's looking like the guy that that was getting that early playing time. I think he's taking that next step. Uh, he's ready to go on there. And then you got a guy like Jonathan Lockett. That again, that secondary is gonna, it's going to be tough for those young guys to get in because there's so much depth. Yeah. You look at the safety position. We talked about some of the guys already we didn't even bring up isaiah polamau uh, yeah. he's looking thicker out there he's back from an CJ injury pollard's a veteran you know he's talked about one you know wanting to be in a starting role and so i mean there's yeah it's like there's just not that many starting roles out there and we haven't even mentioned the guy you love who's a freshman let's go huh exactly <laughs> talanoa hufunga there's so many guys oh, yeah, i can't remember the guy he was, yeah. he was raving about all spring yeah he was my he's my tyler vaughn's for this year yeah <laughs> talanoa is great He'll probably play. You know, it's like he's and that's the thing. There's so many guys there that, that they're going to have options. They're definitely going to have options. If they want to put those young guys out there, the, you know, they've got to prove themselves in, in fall camp because there's guys in front of them that can play. Um, no. Do we have more Facebook ones or are those all? Do. Uh, no, we don't. Um, okay. You can put the, um, the uh, Actually, up. Eric Dunn says, with Drevno as a run game corner, do you think uh, we will establish a more physical run game? Um, interesting. 
I, I'm not sure. I don't know if he's going to change that much. I think he's going to, though, be involved in, uh, look, there's Eric, uh, be involved in planning uh, some of this stuff. So we haven't seen him. People ask me, they were asking me yesterday, hey, what's he going to do with the offensive line? We haven't really seen him do much at all with that. He's, you know, he's kind of separated. But I think in the game planning, that run game coordinator title might help. I think they might change the scheme a little bit. Because if you look at what they were doing against Ohio State, there would be plays where, you know, Joey Bosa would come in and uh, – have a like a, a running back or a tight end trying to block them, like not an offensive lineman. It just seemed like scheme-wise, they might have been doing some things that probably weren't all that smart trying to block a guy like that. With You need a big on that big, you know. And they had the great defensive line, they had guys all over the place. But you need to change that a little bit. So I think that's what he could do. I'm not, it's not going to be, he's not going to be in the trenches and drills telling the offensive lineman what to do. But I think he will be on the scheme side. I think that'll help. Okay, yeah. we're out of Facebook questions. That was Sweet. our last Facebook. So if you question. put the you can put the graphic back. Then, I did. Really. Yes, I got I think we'll we'll find out more about the. We won't really know too much about the run game until we get to games. Unfortunately. Yeah. That's that's, that's one of those things that you don't know. It's yeah. hard to see. I mean, they have a run period during practice and stuff, but they're not tackling half the time. I mean, in the scrimmages, I think are going to be closed to us this this uh, fall. I think Maybe. they're on Saturdays. I think yeah. They're I think, closing them. I think they're closed scrimmages. I don't think we're going to be able to see. I don't know. I have to Based on what? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so I'm sorry. She calling you out. Uh, no, I, I'm shocked. I didn't re- I didn't read that super thoroughly, but I don't remember reading I read, that. I was just I put the schedule in our content calendar that you guys don't know we have, but uh, or maybe it was just that they that only Helton's allowed to speak at or maybe that's what it was. That yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. that was. Cuz I I categorize those as different practices in my mind. So yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that will be interesting. I, the other interesting thing is that Helton sounded like it was going to be very uh, engineered because he wanted all three quarterbacks to have yeah. the same opportunity. And that's what the player-run practices have been. They're very engineered. They're very structured. They're scripted. Is the and he wants to script these practices, give everyone the same amount of first-team reps. And you know, there's something to be said that just the competition factor, especially in the summer. I think you're missing that a little bit. Um, I talked to Jenna Harris about this. If you remember when he came in, he came into the program. He hadn't played wide receiver since he was seventh grade. He was a cornerback and a quarterback at Crenshaw High School. He comes in for summer workouts and starts catching balls on all the top DBs USC had. And everyone's like, who's this kid, you know? And he was great. And he, he got some time at wide receiver and he switched, you know, he switched back and forth a little bit. But that was, those were competitive one-on-one things in the summer. If he came in today, you would never see that because they're only running like scripted stuff. And, you know, he would have to do something in the framework of whatever they're running to show you what he can do. So I'd rather see a little bit less of that scripting stuff. We'll see. I mean, I guess you want to get everyone opportunities. But in the summer especially, I miss the, the really competitive stuff. We're just not seeing as much of that anymore. And us being able to shoot the video yeah. and yeah. pictures and stuff of that from the field. That'd be great. But, you know, times have changed, Ryan. That was They've like 14 changed. years ago because Ajene has been around for forever. To be like. fair, we did see Ajene at wide receiver a lot this summer just because he'd pop over to the other side. Right. Yeah, but I do Still miss – good over there too. Yeah, I do miss – there was a lot of one-on-one competitiveness after – like the the team period would stop, and I thought that was interesting. Always fun to see those guys battle, especially like Dory and, and Juju. But right, you don't they don't that. do that anymore. Yeah. They do that sometimes. Eh. No, they do that. So they did it on the last practice. Amon Ra, Devin Williams were out there against Biggie, and I, uh, I think Isaiah Langley and one other. But know. it's it's not the same as it was like a couple of years ago. It's certainly not emphasized. It almost seems like it's discouraged, and that's which you know. To me, it's a, that's a little unfortunate, but whatever. Well, you know. Um, what do we got? We got lots Lau, of comments here. Lau, I don't know if I'm saying your name right. We have says, some people coming about you, Keely. You know, uh, like, yeah. not just me. We don't say those, though, Ryan. Um, <laughs> he says, does it look like the O-line has accepted the challenge that the rest of the team is talking about, being physical um, and getting stronger? It's really hard to say because they're on way far away from – I shot a few drills from them, one of the last practices – but they are so far away, and we're up on Cromwell Field, it's really hard to see what the offensive line is is doing. But the, the drills I put up there, people didn't really like. It wasn't. It was like a minute of like them hitting bags and stuff, and they were like, oh, that doesn't look good. But it's really hard to, it's hard to see at this point. And try to talk to Toa Lowendon. He declined to talk. He didn't want to talk. Yeah. Um, so, really? Yeah. Chris has talked to Clayton Johnston. I think we talked to Austin Jackson as well. 
Uh, those guys battling, obviously, for the left tackle position. Yeah. Um, I talked to Brett Neal in a little bit. He was, you know. The, what they're going to do with center is still going to be healthy to play center. You know, there's some questions there. Uh, from talking to Porter Gustin, yeah, I talked it to sounds him. like yes, but we haven't really heard it from the offensive linemen themselves. I mean, I, he talked about how that was an emphasis, obviously, in the trenches, but the offensive line in particular is stuff he talked about, you know, getting stronger and stuff, and how, you know, he talked about getting more food for players and stuff and, yeah. and you know, doing different things like that where – it's like, why is poor Gustin the guy that's got to go and tell, tell someone that they need more food? Go that eat. was the interesting thing because I was asking him, like, okay, so you got – you were like, you're teaching some guys about how to eat properly. You ask for more food. You do a different, like, weightlifting thing than the, the team does. Why is this about – and he kind of backpedaled. He's like, no, yeah. no, well, Ivan's really good, and, like, I just add on to what USC does. But if he's doing something different, doesn't it kind of raise that question? He didn't really want to go into it. But I did ask him about – uh, the line and the tackles that he goes up against. And he said that they did kind of change their weightlifting routine. They did kind of change their eating. But it's, it, like you said, it's different hearing it from Porter versus O line guys who are like, yeah, this is what we did and we're proud of it. So I don't know how much we can take that as, as yeah. what it's worth. Porter seems like the Pied Piper and all the people are following him and stuff. And they're like, oh, he's, you know, not that they're all stopped being sweets and everything, but. You know, Cam feels guilty if he's going to eat something that's, <laughs> you know, that's sweet. And you know, they've changed. They've they're doing a lot more Porter Gustin kind of workouts than, you know, what their their scheduled ones are. And 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 I get it. He doesn't want to bag on what the current USC staff is doing, but he has his own way. And I think a lot of the players are buying into that. Well, one of the things when I asked him how does his workout regime kind of mesh with the, the strength and conditioning program that USC has, and he said one of the things he one of the mistakes he made was as a freshman, he went off and did his own thing and said now, he said he didn't know, he didn't really know the whole game plan is how he phrased it. So he said now he actually goes to Ivan and talks to him. And he, he basically gets the, the workout plan and then builds his stuff off of that. So he goes, okay, today, you know, Ivan's guy's doing this particular group of muscles in our legs. So then he'll do an extra workout, but it's the same muscles. So he's not like contradicting. He's not doing legs the day before and then having to go at, at night in, in his own workout and then going at 6 a.m. And they're like, hey, when you do squats and stuff today, he's like, I, I just did legs last night. Right. He said now he's building off that. And that's one of the things that he's doing. So it, it's not counter, uh, it's not counterintuitive kind of. It's not playing against what the USC string uh, program is building on. And that's what he was kind of talking about. So he actually consults with Ivan Lewis. He consults with a nutritionist. Like, he's like a an extra strength and conditioning coach for them. <laughs> like, he's going through and, like, and because he, he, he said, like, I've studied nutrition for, like, eight, you know, he's been working on his body in this particular way, he said, for eight years. He said the last time he had a suite was M&M's in the eighth grade. And so someone said uh, that the reason why he did that is because he was camping, and that was yeah. the only food they had. So yeah. uh, he is doing – he's been doing that for a while. He said he's been studying nutrition as well. Like that's something that he's been really interested in. So for the last four, five, six years uh, since he's been in high school to coming into USC, he's been interested in the nutrition. So that's why he does – I mean, the reason why he does these smoothies, and uh, I think one of the ESPN people did the – did, made the smoothie with like him yesterday. Yeah, it's like basically like chicken, like a, basically a meal. It's a meal, and he just he makes just it into a smoothie. Yeah. But the reason is because he got tired of eating so much. He's like, I'm just going to – and he just he just chugs the smoothies. Like that's what, what he does. Just because he got tired. It's like I'm eating eight meals a day or whatever it is, and there's these lean protein meals and all that. So eventually he's like, I'm just going to drink it as a smoothie. <laughs> Apparently we have resurrected on Facebook. Really? Yes. Oh. I think we're delayed – but um, we have a couple more minutes. If you guys want to put in questions, I guess on Facebook too and on YouTube, um, we are monitoring those. We're getting rapid fire yet? Let me see. Oh, rapid fire. TBC. Yeah, let's do some rapid fire. Yeah, Where's we want to. We kind of want to end at one. It's, we're not going to do this too long. We, we just wanted to kind of test it, it was out. A beta show. Do a little talking. We haven't been done our live show for a while. Um, yeah. Earlier in the YouTube uh, comments. Uh, there was a question uh, kind of about Bryce Young. USC got a big commitment yesterday, 2020 quarterback. Yeah. Um, kind of looking at Bryce Young, but also the, there was a follow-up question. Do you think that will affect our chances with DJ Uolele? Um So both the two 2020 five-star quarterbacks, local kids, Bryce Young is a smaller kid going to modern day, basically is following uh, – JT Daniels now, he now gets to be the successor there. DJ Uolele is at Bosco, so you have the two rivals playing against each other. We'll see them this year playing one another, and we'll see it. The, the question with DJ Uolele is, you, you, I don't think, I think you take Bryce Young automatically. 
I think you take Bryce Young as a five star. And if you can get DJ Ulele to come in as well, you get both of them. And you know that you put it as a competition. Now, if that scares one of them off, it scares one of them off. The problem, though, is that Ulele has legit baseball prospects. I talked with some baseball coaches and scouts uh, a couple of weeks he had ago. To baseball in here somehow. <laughs> well, he's a, he has you now he hasn't played. He's played his freshman year, and he's he's going to try to play in the spring next year as a junior and try to showcase himself there. And if he comes back and he's he legit as is expected, then he has first-round potential. And if his parents are, uh, the way I would look at it is, you go play baseball, if it doesn't work out, you can come back and be, you can be Chris Winkie, you can be Brandon Wheaton. Yeah. Be a 26-year-old quarterback that takes over a program. And then Brandon Wheaton, both those guys went to the NFL. And Chris Winkie was in the NFL, I think, six, seven, eight years. Um, so... I think you go the baseball route because there's more money in baseball. Uh, it's easier to get a bigger contract in baseball, I think, for the top-tier guys versus in football. So I think you would go that route uh, initially, and then if it doesn't work, come out come back. So as if you're recruiting DJ, you go, we need a backup plan. So if you get Bryce Young before him, hey, then you still recruit both of them. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you try to take that. And then if he ends up signing for baseball, then you live with it. You should Google what rapid fire is, by the way, and then look how this move on. I didn't answer three <laughs> questions in one. Well done. Three questions in one. Okay. Um, you got me. Let's see. Uh, someone said, don't sleep on Caleb Tremblay. We forgot about him, too. He's like, so he's 275-ish. Um, doesn't look, he, compared to the other guys inside, he just doesn't look like he's going to be, like he might need to develop a little bit more. But he could be like a... Rasheem Green kind of spot or something. Yeah, I think. I think he would try to play that same in role, you know, at the same similar way to Rasheem Green. I remember we didn't really talk about the defensive line, so we didn't really miss him. Oh, I had mentioned like a few guys that you know, uh, but yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. My bad. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no. We actually have another Facebook question. New. Oh, they're back. So how does Facebook back? We were. I don't know. We resurrected. We were dormant. It was like a you know a caterpillar, and then we were a butterfly. Apparently. I think I just kicked the table. I might have moved the camera. Penny crap. says, "Who has the inside track to start a tight end?" The inside track? Josh Follow is probably the most NFL-ready guy. I talked to some NFL personnel uh, yesterday at Pac-12 Media Day. Um, I mean, you like some of the guys, but Follow, they, they're the one they seem to like. But you guys saw him, or Akilah, you saw him get injured, right? Was he a- Okay. I, what, it was, he was on a cart with a boot on. No, he didn't have a boot on. He, had a, he didn't have a shoe on, and he had crutches. And people were, players were coming up to him and were like, are you okay, man? And he was just like stone face and was just like, no. And so... I know, I know. Wait for your, wait to contradict me, Chalkin. So I just said on the P, I was just like, hey, just so you know, this is what I saw. This is what Dan saw. It didn't look good, but we don't know. I'm just telling you what I saw. Then I went on vacation and didn't actually follow up on that because I didn't see what follow looked like. Shotgun, go ahead. And we didn't see him at at the last workout, but I did see him later uh, on campus. He was walking around, no boots, no crutches. Looked to be no limp, so he looked to be good. I don't know if that necessarily means he's ready to go at this moment, but he should be ready to go for yeah. fall camp, I would guess. Um, however, wh- what does that have to do with the starter, though? I mean, that, that's who's going to maybe take over, but he's not going to start this year. Don't forget about Tyler Petit. Tyler Petit and <laughs> Daniel no, no, say, you want to talk? We don't know about the health. I don't think there. Daniel starts. I don't think Daniel starts UW. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even sure if he's... I, Daniel great starts. case. You know, Daniel you think starts. He starts? Yeah. No, it's uh, coming back. I do Follow not think is the start. one if you talk to like he's the guy with the potential. So if they really want to utilize the tight end more and and make it a weapon, he's the guy. Yeah, next year. All right, we'll see. Um, now that he's hurt after Keeley's false injury report or something. It was not. False. I'm just kidding. I know he was on a cart. Like it's really legit. It okay. looked intense, and I don't want to like wave the flag. If I tweeted about it, that's a little excessive. Um, hey, LV Live, it's going to be a regular thing. Yeah, we're going to try to do yeah. this. We didn't say about that. Probably twice a week is what we were talking about, right? We're bumping it up, apparently. We're, we're going to try to do it twice a week. Pump, uh, is that what up. we said before? That's pump, yes, pump it up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But so we but this is like a test. We, you know, I moved into a bigger space. We have a little more room. We got more equipment. The capabilities of broadcasting to multiple platforms. We just want to make sure it all works. So I don't know what happened in the middle where we, we got... Keely broke out. it. Keely broke it somehow. Answer for everything, which but sure. it's, it's unfair because like I set all this equipment up and then we put right. Keely in the chair to run it all because you know usually I'm in that chair but it's it's more she's going to be more of like the host so we're going to have her do that but you kind of have to control a lot of stuff too so hey I'm also the one who suggested a beta test so. this is the beta test this is a good beta test like we I guess so, yeah. we've had ups and downs we've had you know all around tears 
Uh, another question that came up, what's the final word on Jamel Cook? He still hangs around. He was hanging around outside of PRPZ in the snack, so. Yeah. Still around campus, not on the roster. I, I assume it's going to be like an EJ Price situation where EJ Price finished up and made sure his grades were good so he could transfer. And he's now at Kentucky. Yeah. I think he's still there. There was some weird thing with EJ Price where he like quit for a day or two. I would say Kentucky. this. write this down if you're a USC fan. If a player comes off the roster, never ask about him again because he will not come back on the roster. I don't think. that can happened? ask it, but he's or not going to Or you can ask Brian about scholarships, what that means. No, Just you don't direct need to all do your that questions either. at Inside yes. Troy, all the scholarship questions. Yes. Uh, yeah, people are like, oh, is this, could he come back? Like, I've not seen any indication that anyone would ever come back. If they make the decision to take him off the roster, it just seems to be like that's the decision and you move on. Where does Ryan plan to eat when in Austin? Good question. My buddy Kurt lives there. I lived with when I was living in the Bay Area. We went to college together at USC and. Uh, Breakfast tacos are a pretty good thing from, like, uh, I forget some of the places, but I like getting queso down there because we don't get a lot of oh. queso sauce and stuff here. It's pretty good. I don't know, but I, he just takes me around to restaurants and stuff. Should it's good to have them? friends oh. in every city. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you're Ryan Abraham. <laughs> um, should we tell them about our plan for our second show? Because we usually have them on Thursdays. Yeah, so what's the, sh what's the plan? Because I forget what the plan is. The so. second show, it's, <laughs> it's still in the works, but we were thinking of coming in on Sundays and having like a recap, analysis, debrief about the game that just happened. Yeah. So quick uh, analysis, not quite instant, but day after instant analysis of, not instant don't, analysis. Don't okay, okay, not instant analysis because that's actually a thing. <laughs> it's just gonna be a live show talking about the game. That way also on Thursdays, we're previewing a lot of the game that's gonna come yeah. rather than recapping like we did last year. Yeah, because there's no open practices on Thursday. So, but you know, there's, um, we can go talk to Clay Helton after practice, but we can't watch practice on Thursdays during the season. So yeah. Sunday, Thursday is the format. Probably midday stuff, right? We talked about 10, 11, yeah. noon, something like that. I forget Maybe what Maybe later. <laughs> Maybe later. Oh, yeah. Um, on Sunday. Yes, yes. We could try. Yeah, because there's a lot of stuff that we kind of have to get to on Other Sunday. Other work, but, too. Um, yeah, so Trojan, uh, Trojan, Tunnel Vision on a Sunday. I actually created a graphic that said, you see the thing down there? It said Trojan Vision, which is actually something on campus. It's like a show, yeah. It's a show that they have on campus. And it's a I, I stuck in my head. I created the graphic wrong, and then Keely walks in and <laughs> tells me it's wrong. I'm like, oh, thanks. So I had to change that real quick. Oh, well, part of the beta test. You know, we'll beta get some test. better. If we stick with this name, we'll get some better graphics and stuff yeah. and, uh, and do some stuff. But hopefully you kind of like this format. Um, Jason Swain, who played at the University of Tennessee, my wife knows him, and I went down to see his studio set up something similar and we you, you so he's helped me a lot and so this kind of looks similar to what his show is he has the swain event down there in uh in knoxville tennessee so um but thanks to shout out to jason for helping helping me set this up shout out to jason i guess any final thoughts before we wrap it up any last questions that we can get in and any final thoughts from you two uh, who's starting opposite of biggie i think it'll be uh isaiah langley yeah for him. I think so. Uh, LV Live said Uchenna was not kicked off. That's true. So Uchenna did take his little break for like the spring or something. So that that's one. He actually um, left school for a semester yeah. and then came back. So that's uh, which was basically going to be the plan for Jack Jones. Uh, that was the initial thought: is that hey, he may go to a JUCO, get his grades up, and come back. But I don't see that happening now. Yeah. Tester Troy just popped in and said, oh, no, did I miss it? <laughs> yes, Tester, Tester Troy. Troy. Oh. TV we had a lot buddy. of comments without you. Like, that's crazy. Our anonymous like, buddy. How many comments? Is there like 200 comments there or something? No, how many, there's like a lot. Um, <laughs> Here's a good rapid fire end of the, what's your prediction on the depth chart if everyone's healthy? That's a good. <laughs> that's rapid end. fire if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Yeah, that's not... Uh, Where's Dan? Dan does not do this show. Uh, there's another question about Chris. Chris is also not on the show, though he has occasionally guest starred with us. We yes. will try to do guests and stuff. We will try to, um, if you see the, like the today's topic area, I'm going to basically have a section where we could put other stuff. We could put another person's video there so we could uh, Skype somebody in. Or it wouldn't be Skype, but it's a different, you know, we could video chat somebody in. We could get a third person here because we're just using like a shotgun microphone uh, to that's capture right. it. So it's not like we need... We could bring another person in. Chris is not. Uh, Chris is kind of a quiet guy. He's not a. You know, it's not his favorite thing doing this kind of stuff. But we love he's to have him. Quieter on us. Once huh? you get to know him, he's he's. So we can get. It. We'll we'll get him in there, and then you know Dan we usually doing podcasts and stuff with, but we'll try to do stuff there too. Yeah. Uh, quick thoughts on a couple of players here: Pelli Naitiote. 
How do you say his name? That's the first question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. Um, Same for I, the I don't really get to watch a lot of him this summer, but when you look at him, like he it passes the the eye test, you know, compared to the other guys out there. So. Looks physical enough. Again, like Ryan said, didn't really see too much in the PRPs and stuff necessarily. Him standing out in that regard. Connor Murphy, a guy we didn't see too much of no. during during yeah. the summer workouts. So. Not uh, a lot. Don't know what the question. I mean, don't know exactly what's going on there. I think he's moving inside, so maybe that was part of it. Maybe he's just working out extra because he's trying to bulk up a little more. I'm not sure. Uh, so didn't see too much of him. Um, I think there was one more player. Kanai Munga is a guy that stood out. Uh, Cameron Smith said that he might be the guy to watch out for in that linebacker class because I kind of asked him because Cam Smith was in his four. It was him, John Houston, yeah. Porter Gustin, Osa Messina. He was kind of the guy that everybody forgot about that wasn't talked about. And he, he was not the highest rate. He was yeah. The, yeah. And he's the guy that stood out. And he, I asked him, I was like, who's Played the guy the that could, could kind of be you in this class? And he's like, well, you know, can I uh, – he kind of has a similar thing because he was there in the spring like Cam was and he has that advantage on the other guy. So he said he might be a guy that could, could pop out. Totally stealing my question. What? I told you I want to ask Cam that. Uh, I do not remember that at all. Bickering. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, are you guys gonna give me your you get your podcast going yeah, again? Yeah, we're we're getting warming up the bickering for podcasts. All right, so Family Feud podcast should be coming soon. Ta-da! Too. Uh, was, well, thanks someone everyone. Someone said they missed stock neutral. Thank There's you. no such thing as stock neutral. Yes, I gotta shout out whoever that was. It's not happening. Dave S. Shout out to Dave S. Dave S. Well, thanks everyone. Um, sorry for the glitch on the Facebook side. I'm glad it popped back up. I don't know. I'm gonna have to take a look at it, but it looks like YouTube worked the whole way, so that's great. Um, Pretty crazy. I, yeah, and I, I don't know about Periscope yet. We'll look at that and see. Maybe we don't need to do the Periscope side, but, you know, we'll try to get it to work. I mean, I, people still use Periscope, right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe not. Is it not really as popular anymore? I think it's only for, like, when there's something super breaking and someone's trying to... Okay. So we'll see. I mean, we'll play with it and see. Maybe it's it could be going right now. We don't know. But we that's the plan. Sundays and Thursdays is what we want to do. And Tunnel Vision is what we're calling it for now. Come up, give us some ideas for better names but i think that's what we're gonna go with and uh give us your ideas so you can win a free month <laughs> yeah get call shout out to you again for uh, coming up with a cool name this morning all righty we'll see you guys i i believe the next time we'll see them is fall camp will be in full swing correct uh i think so yeah what's today today's today's thursday, this thursday? are we doing another one thursday or are we just gonna wait till fall camp gets going uh maybe, maybe we'll do another one next thursday like a pre fall like it'd be a good preview right we could do it yeah so stay tuned. We'll tweet it out. Make yeah, sure we'll you follow all of us on Twitter. That's where you're going to know you can what's see up. Our, I put latest. our Twitter handles up They've there. They've been there the whole time, so no excuses. Sweet. <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys next week.